The release of Blender 4.5 brings us a lot of very exciting updates for geometry nodes. In fact, you could say that it's a boundary-breaking bunch of brilliant innovations, because it's packed with a powerful set of new nodes that broaden our possibilities yet again. And there are so many nodes with changes that if you cram them all into a group, that group would be so big it would be visible from space. Probably. I'm not an astrophysicist, I just do geometry nodes. We will start with something new, set mesh normals. Now we can store edge and mesh sharpness, edit existing tangent space normals, or create normals in the new free format, which can be much faster, what with it just being a simple 3D vector. All of this new normal manipulation has incredible potential. For example, if we create custom normals for this Suzanne, by taking her normals and mixing them with normals sampled from the nearest surface of a second object. Then, control the mix's factor with the distance between the two, we can create a smooth transition between the two meshes without changing their topology. Now, you may have noticed that some of your favorites have suddenly got very skinny. Well, the same thing has happened with geometry nodes too. The geometry sockets on nodes like these have been aligned to use the same row. The input nodes have had redundant labels removed and then been gently compressed. And image inputs now have buttons to create or open an image. In fact, all of these nodes have had a zhuzh. The new match string node allows us to search a string for the presence of another string. So, with the help of a switch and a string to curves node, we can confirm that Romeo and Juliet starts with Romeo, that it contains Romeo, but sadly, he's not there at the end. The string to curves node, it still outputs each letter as an instance, but now each instance is named after its character. Super useful for debugging in the spreadsheet, and probably helpful for your Wordle skills too. Next, we're moving along to the Curve to Mesh node, where there's now a scale input to scale the profile curve. This replaces the implicit use of the radius attribute that was used before, allowing us to scale the profile curve directly. But innovations don't just move in the Curve to Mesh direction, because Mesh to Curve now has the option of two modes allowing us to choose between the existing behavior, converting each edge into a curve, and this new one that takes each face and converts it into a cyclic curve. And the bounding box node? Well, it's now newly curve sensitive with a checkbox to include both their radiuses and those of point clouds. We'll bound back to bounds in a minute, but first, grease pencil nodes, which now have their own submenu in the add menu. In it, there's three new nodes, and we'll start with the set grease pencil color node. This does exactly what it says it's going to do, letting us change both the color and opacity of either our strokes or fills. For your more granular selection needs, the layer names in the Named Layer Selection node are now searchable. The other two new Grease Pencil nodes are Set Grease Pencil Softness, with which we now have control of the Softness attribute, and the Grease Pencil Depth node. With this, we can set the Grease Pencil Depth option as either that of the 2D layers or the 3D location in the scene. But let's be serious. Blender 4.5 isn't all funky new Grease Pencil nodes, it's funky new field nodes too. There's Instance Bounds, which gives us the bounding box dimensions of instances without realizing them, with the option of including their radiuses too. And, though in the past, operations of the Attribute Statistic node were only accessible while tethered to a geometry noodle, we can now break free of it with these three field input nodes. Field Average, Field Min and Max, and Field Variance. And there's a load of new math too. The new Bitmath node has a tidy set of Bitmath operations, 
And there's two new operations in the vector math node, power and sign. When there are this many operations, I think it's called maths. Next, the new camera info node, which outputs information about the selected camera object. It can be used for camera culling or to generate geometry using the camera's precise point of view so that you can create effects like this. There's also some tight geometry node interface updates designed to improve our noding experience. For example, you know how the position socket on the set position node defaults to the position field if you don't plug anything into it? Well now, if I create a new group around that node, it will set a default behavior for the new group's position input based on the behavior of that socket. And previously, unused sockets were just grayed out. But now, if a socket is unused because of a menu input, that socket is then hidden. Oh, and if you want to time out and tap some beats, you can now expand your menus into buttons. And while we are minding our menus, menus can now control other menus. I'm not being weird, but this could escalate really quickly. Finally, we come to what is quite possibly the most consequential of 4.5's geometry node updates. Six new nodes for importing six types of external data. And we can even drag and drop the files into the geometry node editor to automatically create the corresponding import node. The new format string node formats values into a string using either a Python compatible string format or Blender's syntax. With it, we can combine and format values in a super neat way something especially useful for importing sequences of files. And if you're a heavy viewer node user like me, you'll be pleased to hear that it now supports shortcuts. Control and the number sets a shortcut. Then simply press the number to activate it. So that's getting things into geometry nodes. What about getting things out? Well, we can now convert procedurally generated instances into objects and collections with the new Visual Geometry to Objects operator, which lives in the Apply menu. It doesn't replace the active object, but creates new ones from its evaluated geometry. And that is all the geometry node newness in Blender 4.5. As we take a quick tour past my wonderful Patreons, I wanted to tell you that every frame of this video was made with geometry nodes. It is an extraordinary tool. Or tools. Um, feature? Or features? Innovations? Ah, it is an extraordinary thing.